Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. I have a lot of great things to talk about today. There's a bu bunch of events happening this week and this weekend as well. But of course, if you uh, weren't out and about uh, last week, you missed out on a lot of things that kind of got unveiled and a whole bunch of things that are happening this week leading up to the Fort Missoula Regional Park's grand opening of phase one of two phases that will be the whole entire park will be open by uh, summer 2018, but the phase one part of the park with all the new fields and all the great stuff will be open um, this Saturday, and they'll be doing an event from 10 to 4 p.m., 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and you guys can go to the Fort Missoula Regional Park to find out everything that's going on there. They'll have some historic talks and all that and more. Um, I have a video kind of like highlighting everything that uh, it, it will give you a visual tour of the Fort Missoula Regional Park and I'll get more on that a little bit later. Uh, there, the city council meeting was about 16 minutes long but I still uh, uh, grabbed a quote from um, John Wilkins which I'll get to in a bit but let's talk about some weather. So um, here is the weather. It is currently 41 degrees outside. It's warm but there's that showers. They have rain happening today and it's going to continue into tonight. Your Thursday you have a rain and snow mixtures with a high of 49 degrees so it's going to stay fairly warm into the high and low high 40s and low 50s. Um, the rain's going to hopefully d dissipate by this Saturday for all your outdoor activities so if you're stuck indoors while it's raining you are lucky. Um, so uh, that is your weather report. Now let's talk about some of the news that's happening. Lots of things are happening in Missoula and in the county as this week begins the opening of the Fort Missoula Regional Park Phase 1 Park, while Phase 2 will be open doing their final phase in summer 2018. Um, last Friday, the city of Missoula, in partnership with the Missoula uh, Art Museum, Adventure Cycling, and I believe some downtown groups had uh, the grand opening of the art park in Missoula, not to mention uh, Ginny Miriam with the city of Missoula, who uh, was instrumental in helping put together the uh, Missoula Downtown Art Park. And here is Mayor John Engen giving a speech um, on the christening of the new uh, downtown uh, public restroom. Uh, great City is a product of people working together. These three work together with countless faces in this audience to make sure that this happens right here in Missoula, Montana on a beautiful April day. The fact that people will enjoy this site long after we're dust is pretty amazing and it also matters. Art, by the way, also matters. We cannot live, as it turns out, by bread alone, and lately I can't have carbs, so it's a thing. Uh, but art feeds the soul, art feeds the spirit, and art ensures that we speak a common language. And as long as we're speaking a common language, we got hope for this world. All right, so that was Mayor John Ingen speaking on the Art Park. You can see the full program by looking up Art Park on our MCAT.org uh, video on demand website, and it will be airing on MCAT sporadically on Channel 189. Um, moving on, also what's happening in the state is uh, oh, other news. Sorry, I just wanted to bring it back to some local news. Um, I just wanted to say that the Kettle House Amphitheater plans are now available on the Missoulian.com uh, where they have a large list of concerts slated for the summer by the Blackfoot River which include uh, Pat Benatar and Neil Geraldo with uh, Melissa Etheridge, um, Lyle Lovett and his large band, Primus and Clutch, uh, Tedeschi and Truck Spant, uh, Tedeschi's truck band Wood Brothers uh, Hot Tuna, uh, there's going to be Slayer, Lamb of God, and Behemoth. So, um, and then also uh, the very popular Ween will also be performing there as well this summer at the uh, Kettle House Amphitheater in partnership with uh, the Top Hat um, Lounge. Um, so that's uh, quite a list of talent that is going to be coming through uh, Bonner, Montana, near the Blackfoot River. So um, in the state, uh, the state House and Senate on Tuesday passed a measure to give residents the option to buy a driver's license or identification card that um, can complies with the Federal Real ID Act. That means if you have a Montana state license, it will allow you to board flights out of the country without having a passport, but would require the state to pay up to $4.6 million to make special federal licenses and as a result. So it's, it's, it's uh, um, the state of Montana has had kind of held out on being part of the federal um, transition into doing this so now that they officially passed it on Tuesday so from the from this the residents can continue doing as they do without having issues with certain flights which would require them passport and their identification as well um, in national news President Trump awarded a Purple Heart to Sergeant First Class uh, 
uh, Alvaro uh, Barry Entos um, at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center outside Washington, D.C. on Saturday. Uh, Barry Entos was wounded in Afghanistan on March th 17th and had his right leg amputated below the knee. According to the Associated Press, he was accompanied by, at a ceremony by his wife, Tammy, First Lady uh, Melania Trump, as well as was also in attendance. The Purple Heart is awarded to service members killed or wounded in action. According to pool reports, Trump kept his remarks brief. When uh, I heard about this, okay, he said, um, this is what he said in quotes, uh, when I heard about this, I wanted to do it myself, so congratulations, Trump said, tremendous. Um, and uh, John Wilkins was kind of uh, taken aback um, from the quotes that uh, he made. So this is what um, John Wilkins said from our city council in response to um, the Purple Heart. I was watching our president put the ribbon around him and then congratulating him. Congratulating him? What did he do? Win a race to see who got the bullet first? How about thank you for your service? There's no congratulations in that. In the Medal of Honor, most recipients say it isn't just for them. It's for all the people that was with them. This young man, paraplegic in a wheelchair, all I could see is he looked up at the president, but he didn't say anything. But he had this blank expression on his face. I thought this was just terrible. And uh, it just really has bugged me, and that's why I had to bring it up tonight. All right, so that was uh, John Wilkins in um, response to the president awarding the Purple Heart to um, um, Alvaro uh, Barrientos. So uh, moving, that basically concludes uh, everything um, that you need to know about what's happening in and around Missoula and in the nation. So I'm going to throw it to a PSA uh, from the Missoula Agent Services because I got a guest. It's Alicia uh, Crandall. She's, she's the educating coordinator, and she's going to be talking about life reimagined. So we'll be right back uh, right after this. Senior Corps at Missoula Aging Services is Missoula's volunteer hub. Hundreds of volunteer opportunities await. You can help improve reading skills, school attendance, and the well-being of students, provide services that help older adults, or find out about countless other opportunities that will capture your interest. Because your heart's desire never ages, now is the time to reinvent yourself. Discover your perfect volunteer opportunity by calling 728-7682. Birthdays come and go, each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. Knowing you've got friends to support you, each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. Hey guys, I'm with Alicia Crandall, and she's the education coordinator for the Missoula Aging Services. And as you can see from the last couple PSAs, Missoula Aging Services um, uh, provides the dignity of uh, some of our uh, uh, aging population. I th you think I would know the uh, mission you. statement by Will now? You want me to tell you? Yes. Missoula Aging Services promotes the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those that care for them. Yes. And MCAT is always great about giving us the opportunity to do that on TV. Yes, but you're talking about life reimagined. So basically, uh, from what I got from the title is, um, the, uh, my interpretation of that is, uh, um, it's when somebody retires and then they think about what's next. And it, sure. And, and you guys are doing a class in, associate, in association with AARP, but let's talk about what is life uh, reimagined. Sure. So Missoula is hosting through AARP Montana, uh, a life reimagined checkup. It's a free two hour workshop. And what it is, is it's an opportunity. It's geared towards for people age 50 and over. However, we will not turn anyone away, even if they're under 50. It's an opportunity for people to explore what they're passionate about and to think about ways to incorporate that passion into their life. Um, it's a really nice, focused two hours where we'll have about 15 participants in each workshop and those participants will be working individually as well as together. Uh, it'll be tons of fun and I, I would say for anyone that's listening that has had an idea or doesn't have an idea about what's next, 
to come and it'll give an opportunity to think about plan and make it happen because we all know in Missoula it's an adult playground there are so many choices and sometimes it's hard to figure out what are the things you want to zone in on to incorporate into your life so um who, what can people expect from these education workshops? Who, who's the one going to be presenting them? Sure, we have a trained uh, life reimagined guide. Her name is Lee Kelleher, and she's worked in Missoula for about 35 years in the legal services. She's done mediation. She's also a trained life coach, and she's been working with AARP to go through the curriculum, and she's ready to go, and I think everyone will will enjoy her. She volunteers her time to do this. Um, and what can people expect? People can expect a fun environment where they're going to laugh and be challenged to think about what ignites them, what brings that fire to their eye or to their life. Cool. Yeah. And, and in your experiences, what are some of the things that really uh, registers with some of the people who are 50, 50 and older? Mm -hmm. Gosh, we have, again, such a playground here, be it volunteering, be it dance, music, be it um, helping out at the POV, uh, RSVP program, our volunteer programs, um, being a member at a gym. There are so many things. I would say for this class, people can expect we will, AARP is providing um, snacks and beverages and um, it's going to be at the M Missoula Public Library in the large meeting space. Yeah, and I think this is a great program, and this would be also not only for life reimagined, but also a good introduction for the Missoula Asian Service as well for some folks. Absolutely, I would think you know, uh, AARP is all about um, helping people to improve their quality of life through activities, and I would also think for people who out there who are caregivers and just need a break to come in and think about themselves for a couple hours, it's a great opportunity. Cool, uh, and where can people get more information? Sure. And can you tell us one more time when and where this is happening? Sure, this is happening at the Missoula Public Library on the Tuesday after Memorial Day, Tuesday, May 30th. We'll have two workshops, one from 2.30 to 4.30, another one from 5.30 to 7.30. People can get on our Missoula Aging Services website www.missoulaagingservices.org. Click on our events calendar and you'll see the Life Reimagined on that date or call our call center at 541-HELP. Great. Yes. Well, thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks, once Scott. again, this is Alicia Crandall and right after Memorial Day, Tuesday at the Public Library. Go check it out. You can find more information at missoulaagingservices.org. Life Reimagined is coming right at you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. So we'll be right back right after this. So stay tuned, I have a lot more show for you guys. When we were there, um, they were working on salt fluoridation because the other countries surrounding them were using it and now they do have, their salt is fluoridated and they also fluoridate their milk. So they have calcium and fluoride added to the milk. Milk is not as common um, to drink is a little expensive, but that is fluoridated, but everyone uses tons of salt. So they are getting some fluoride. Uh, if I give you funding, you have to do things that I want you to do. Otherwise, I'm not giving you funding. I'm giving him funding. Um, so imagine I came to you and said, here's 100 billion. Do you want 100 billion? Okay, will you agree to a few things? Okay, first, um, what are you studying? Um, creative. Okay, you're fine. Um, creative writing, it's not a big money maker. Right. It's not going to be sustainable. So I'd like you to change your major. Could you do business for me? No. <laughs> okay. I'm not. Are you willing to do business? Yeah. Okay, you get the money. So you're going to change your major to business. All right. Um, also, some of your friends are nice. The rest, they're probably not so good for you. So if I'm just going to give you a list. If you could just hang out with these people more, that'd be great. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, good. Also, the hair. It's just not, not appropriate. And if you could also adopt all of my political leanings and uh, moral opinions. Is that good? No? All right, I'm going to give the money to her. 
This is conditionality. This is how it works. Trust, as I sort of suggested earlier, was a moral address. It's like saying, can I count on you? Or even asking, can I count on you to count on you? You, you sort of test the waters first. A ballet de dancer needs to know that she won't be dropped as she leans back into her partner's arm for a lift. And whether or not there's intimacy on offstage, there's certainly physical intimacy in the laces and embraces and kinesthetic sensitivity. Similarly, battle buddies train for months together, I'm not quite sure what we're happening, to uh, build unit cohesion and physical intimacy. There's a kind of muscle bonding that comes with moving in cadence with the cadre, with instilled and habituated synchronies. Battle buddies become family tighter than the families that they left home. And um, downrange in remote country away from the FOB, the forward operating base, um, they sleep spoon together in tents for warmth. They're often without tents. Uh, they cover each other's back. They know each other's smells. Um, and you want to make a difference. I want to tell you that we can make a greater difference locally than we can nationally. And I look out and I see a lot of you and a lot of you are my friends and I know a lot of you have been putting time in out there for the feds and the people that are going into the Supreme Court and the people who are now ruling our educational system and also the people who have made change which was already giant and looming in the face of the climate and how we grow our foods to now a crazy madman with a red button who could create a nuclear war. I know, it's funny, right? I want to laugh too. I want to wake up tomorrow and think that this is not the world I live in, but it is the world that all of us live in. And I, for one, vote that we work together instead of against each other. We had already like, talked to Susan Haypatrick at the United Way, and she had this idea of doing a giving day in Missoula. She was from Seattle, she had worked at an organization there, and they have a campaign called Give Big, and they raise about $10 million a year. You know, they have a million dollars of funds that can be used as matching funds for the nonprofits, and you know, she thought we could do this here, in this wonderful community, and so you know, I went to my board, they weren't sure, we had never done anything like this before, but they said, sure, let's give it a try. Why not? Hey guys, I would have showed you uh, my Montana, mi mi my Missoula memories story. That was uh, Meredith Prince. She's with uh, Give Local, actually the Missoula County, um, Missoula um, Community uh, Foundation. Mm, I, I know I'm going to get a call for that, but she's with Give Local, and Give Local is happening um, the first uh, week, like Thursday, Friday, and in, in the first week of May. It's going to be starting May 4th, and it's going to go through May 6th. So it's going to be a 48-hour given event to local nonprofits here in town. And I'll have Nikki Robb on the show, I believe, sometime next week or maybe this uh, Friday. So we'll, we'll see, and I will oh, – sorry, I'll keep you updated. I just took, like, too many – sips of coffee this morning but just so you guys know here's a little bit of MCAT news MCAT will be hosting our our um, our 27th annual well our 27th birthday party we don't usually do annual like events for a birthday but this year we'll be doing a downtown it at downtown dance collective um, so if you check out MCAT.org and you click on this link, you'll be uh, se sent to a page that will kind of explain a little more information. But the only information you guys need to know is from what I'm about to tell you. May 5th from 5 to 8 p.m. during the Art Walk on first Friday in May, MCAT will be having a party at Downtown Lands Collective. You guys can show up anytime. We'll have food. Oh, okay, we'll have drinks, hors d'oeuvres, and all sorts of wonderful things. I don't even know if that's the right way to say hors d'oeuvres. So just bear with me. Um, it's it's going to be great. You get to hang out with all the people. There are going to be a lot of people there who are going to be saying nice things about MCAT and how MCAT has impacted groups, uh, nonprofits, and other uh, community um, members throughout the uh Missoula County area. So you guys can check that out, 5 to 8 p.m. Um, one, and then also, uh, MCAT's going to be slowing down our Saturday drop-ins. MCAT hosts a Saturday drop-in for kids age 9 to 13. It's for $10 per kid per drop-in, but that's for four hours from 1 to 5 p.m. for only $10. 
kids get to come down here and make videos, make stop animations, make all sorts of um, things that they want to make, and we'll help guide the kids on helping making these videos as well. May 20th will be the last day, but also will be a kind of like our own little party to celebrate the Saturday drop-ins. We'll be watching all the movies the kids have made this season, 2016 through 2017 season at MCAT. Uh, but then, of course, we'll take like a month off, and then we'll be really gearing up for all our um, summer camps, which will be happening starting, I believe, um, I want to say it's June 19th. It will be the very first one. Let me just double check. Yes, June 19th. So basically almost like a month exactly from when we uh, wrap up our Saturday drop-ins will be the beginning of our uh, summer camp starting with the media camp. So if you go onto our website um, and you click on the link to our summer camps, um, you can go to uh, media camp, which is all about the behind the scenes in Missoula's um, production scene. So uh, kids who are interested in, in radio, we're, go we're going to go to a radio station. We're going to have a day geared towards radio. We'll also have a, a day geared towards television, broadcast, and also other productions as well. So we'll be looking at uh, many different aspects of television production, which includes TV, uh, audio. We'll also even even check out some of the other production companies here in town, the smaller ones and the more established ones as well. Doesn't mean that the smaller ones are, aren't more established. Excuse my language, uh, but we'll also be doing a Raptors of the Rocky. So we're being it's basically just wildlife biology. It's everything about the outdoors and all that stuff. We'll get the kids out and about in the Missoula area. We'll do some filmmaking in terms of animals and some um, all sorts of just wonderful things. And we'll be going to Kate Davis's ranch at Raptors of the Rocky. She doesn't host kids at her property where all her raptors and all her birds will be. So it's it's a rare opportunity for kids to get out and actually see where all those birds, Kate Davis usually goes to the schools, brings a bird or two to kind of show the animals that she's taking care of. I mean, she only takes care of the birds that are as you would call, uh, not able to be reestablished into the wild. So she ho she has a sanctuary called Raptors of the Rocky, in which MCAT will be able will be able to go. And MCAT's one of the only places that actually gets to go to Raptors of the Rocky. So this is a, a rare opportunity for any kids age nine to thirteen. We are fairly lenient towards somewhat somewhat older kids. Um, but you know, sometimes the older kids just get bored from it, and we usually tell the parents, "It's like you know." Your kid's a little old, but you know, like we're, we're more afraid of him being bored than um, getting along with the other kids. But we also have ki uh, camps geared toward those kids' ages, and I know I'm just like really just selling MCAT to you. Hey, come on down. Uh, let's uh, do some MCAT stuff. Uh, we also have a, a zombie camp that's happening from July 31st to August 4th. It's a nine to five camp for kids who like zombies and who want to make their own zombie movie. So we do like a whole day uh, on Tuesday will be a Z day, uh, otherwise known as a zombie day. So we're gonna be asking Missoula community members to come down, get made up, and basically be horror of zombies so we're gonna try to um, put out the word and do a Facebook invitation and all sorts of event bright stuff just to get people to be like hey come on down we need people so we can make zombies and just just be all sorts of crazy and wonderful um, and also uh, to continue on the Saturday drop in animation we have animation camp which expands on our Saturday drop in animation July 10th through the 14th, July 17th through the 21st, two weeks of stop animation geared towards kids. We usually fill up on one of the camps, so we add a second camp for the kids who can't make it into the first camp. And also, if you guys can't make it into any of our camps, we will give you a referral to um, any of the camps that the Roxy Theater will be doing, because they do filmmaking camps as well, which are just as wonderful, if not better. Um, so uh, I, I just like to give credit to the Roxy Theater, who uh, ha provides a filmmaking um, cl um, club or filmmaking camp um, during the summer, and th they get to premiere it on their big Roxy Theater screen. Um, but we do get to air it on our channel 189, which is wonderful. But that's basically me, me, just, me just pandering to the audience about our summer camps. Let me pander to anybody and everybody who wants to be involved with MCAT, who wants to help MCAT, volunteer MCAT, just basically make a program, make a video, learn to make a program, help people make a program. Um, it's a great community, and it's all about making videos and just having fun with film. And we host orientation every second Wednesday of the month from... 5.30 to about 6.30, 7 o'clock, depending upon how many questions you have. 
we usually try to go, we try to show like an eight minute orientation video and then we kind of go over the rules and just kind of this or that. But the nice thing about being part of MCAT is that you can check out equipment from MCAT, which includes high definition cameras, um, lighting gear, um, sound kits, and all sorts of just wonderful things that MCAT provides for the community for free. And you can also uh, do credit hours at MCAT as well, which is just as wonderful. Uh, but don't come here without uh, uh, an, an imagination because you'll be like, what am I supposed to do? It's like, we can't tell you what to do, but we can help you along the way. So that's my pitch for all of MCAT stuff. I have a uh, nice video for you guys that I made uh, featuring the Fort Missoula Regional Park, which um, basically shows the... Um, which is kind of like the days leading up to the uh, grand opening of the Fort Missoula Regional Park, which will be on Saturday. So without further ado, here's this video. And when I come back, I'm going to talk everything you need to know about what's happening in Missoula for uh, Wednesday and Thursday for your events. Fort Missoula Regional Park, or the expansion of the existing Fort Missoula Park, was identified as a need in the 1995 Open Space Bond Project. Uh, the city purchased 100 acres of land from the University of Montana in 1997 using open space bond dollars. In 2001 and 2002, we went through our first major extensive public process to get to a conceptual master plan, which was actually uh, designed by uh, Rocky M Design. And from 2002 until 2008, we went through the uh, Federal Antiquities Act and State Historic Preservation. Uh, study, which means we did ground penetrating uh, sonar. We studied the importance of Fort Missoula, and we found and we learned what the um, contributing factors are to the historic district. In 2008, we completed our mitigation plan, which said that we would interpret the Civilian Conservation Corps of History of Fort Missoula Regional Park, which is a pretty cool thing, and that's why this architecture is absolutely phenomenal with the logs and the stone. Uh, a contractor out of the Bitterroot constructed this off-site, brought it on-site um, as a kit and put it together. We have, uh, throughout the park, and you don't see a concession building on this phase. Um, one of the things we wanted to get rid of is, uh, you know, when you have a concession building, you only have one type of food that you could really focus on. And so throughout the park, you can see some on our post right here. You can see one over by the shelter or by the, the playground. We did RV, we call them RV hookups, but they're basically a concession hookup. We're so excited to, uh, for her and all of us to share this wonderful event um, on Saturday, grand opening of phase one. Missoula County residents have been significant partners in this project. As you know, this was a city county bond that was approved and voters all over the county paid for this park. We're so excited to share the grand opening of this amazing regional and cultural destination, it, not to mention the recreational piece as well. If you turn around, the historical mu museum at Fort Missoula is just a stone's throw away. We're envisioning people from all over can come and spend a day here recreating, playing, gathering with their families, and enjoying the all of the history surrounding um, surrounding you as you stand in this area. The, the lifespan, depending on your maintenance, ongoing like cyclical maintenance, is probably 8 to 12 years. Um, the company that installed this field uh, has some in play that are 12 to 15, so I think it just depends on your ongoing maintenance. Same with your vehicle. If you change the oil frequently and everything, you could get 300,000 mi 300, miles out of your car or if you neglect it. it kind of Do you have to cover it in the winter? No. Or? Nope, just no. let it go. Yeah. But, then it's, but then is there like an ongoing sort of financial plan for knowing that eventually that replacement will have to happen, whether it's a decade or whether it's 15 years, best case scenario? Yeah, we in our ongoing, in our rental fees, we put some aside in the enterprise account that covers the replacement costs of stuff. Similar to the nets, like the nets on the soccer goals go out. It's a similar process. It's I'll never forget, I was out here working and getting things set up before our very first rental. This was back in November, but, um, and it was a youth soccer team. And I'll never forget, the first two kids came in and they literally just ran straight <laughs> onto the field, threw a soccer ball out, kicked it maybe twice, and one of the kids is, you know, he, he said, 
dude, this is like the best field ever. <laughs> and and I, I have that burned into my brain. <laughs> how happy this kid was. And of course, all the parents keep coming and the coaches come. The rugby pitch was the last uh, field that we sodded last fall. Um, with all the rain that we had in October, we actually sodded this about uh, during October or slightly in the beginning of November. Um, this field is catching up quickly to the other ones just because of the aggressiveness of, this, the, of the sod. Um, you can see we've been mowing it to try to get, like, to help uh, encourage that root growth down instead of coming up through the grass. Wanted another way into Fort Missoula without going past the internment camps. So one of the reasons that diagonal road was uh, cut in um, had to do with uh, basically finding a different way to the museum area hmm. or to the military post. Hmm. So it's pretty interesting. It's one of the reasons we didn't want it to be a public right-of-way. With public right-of-ways, there's um, utilities and other things that have rights to those rights-of-way. And by making it a private park lane, even though the park is public, uh, we're able to control what goes through this route because of its historic significance. We have the ability to do all those things. And what we're trying to do is provide something Missoula didn't have before. The other thing that really excites me about this park, you know, in um, 1902, the Greenough family donated Greenough Park, which is one of the entire county's most popular parks, because we poll countywide which park is the most popular, which one do you use most. And that one in Fort Missoula, and then McCormick and Playfair, because of Splash and Currents, are, are four of the most popular parks, city and county residents alike. 61% of county residents use existing Fort Missoula Park. 61% of city residents use Fort Missoula Park. That's fantastic. So we add these new facilities, aimed at residents as a design uh, team project team we spent a lot of time at what makes this park pertinent to the people who live here or around here within a 30-minute drive on a daily basis so going back to that greeno story think of what greeno park was think about our bonner parks and those first amazing parks that were donated so philanthropically to our community and they define our people and they define our place and they give us pride in where we live that causes us to want to be outdoors and be more active. Well, this is a gift that county residents gave themselves. Because it doesn't work so well anymore for somebody to donate that many acres of land and to, to donate that kind of development and meet all the new codes and all the special things we have to do to make a place special. But Missoula County residents came to together and said, let's create history here today by investing in the people who live here today and the people who will be here 50 and 100 years from now. So I think huge gratitude to our voters and all of the people in Missoula County who understand the value of really incredible public places. NCAT is celebrating 27 years of recording and presenting the Missoula Montana experience, our struggles and our accomplishments that mark the path to the future. We'd like to invite you to celebrate that accomplishment with a party Friday, May the 5th at the Downtown Dance Collective 121 West Main Street. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening in Missoula, courtesy of MissoulaEvents.net. Um, there's a re-entry um, simulation event at the uh, UMC um, Fellowship Hall. Um, it's going to be uh, an event, so you can check it out starting at 9 a.m. Um, this morning and it basically describes as the Missoula community is um, invited to participate in a free re-entry simulation 
um, event. Participants will gain first-hand realistic experience on reentry challenges for individuals returning from prisons to the community. And, you, and this is uh, sponsored by the Parole and Probation um, and the partner, Partners for Reintegration. Um, the next event is yet uh, open hours in the makerspace this uh, 10 a.m. at the Missoula Public Library. Anybody who wants to do 3D printing or learn how to do some 3D printing, makerspace is the place. Um, you got uh, tel Telativities is going to be a family first children's museum. It's going to basically be story time at the uh, at the children's museum at starting at 11 a.m. You got communication practice group is going to be at the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center. It's usually free and it helps you communicate and find uh, peaceful ways to uh, for conflict resolution. And that's starting at noon today. You got easy steps to ebooks happening at Missoula Public Library at 12:30 p.m. It's a class, so you get to learn all about electronic books, um, not just books like you you know like you use to um, learn to uh, use a Kindle or have experience with a Kindle. And that's going to be happening at the Missoula Public, Li Public Library at 12.30 p.m. at the Missoula Pu Public Library. Um, they got Enemy Pie. It's going to be at the family's first children's museum. And I think that's self-explanatory. Uh, they got Middle School Writers Group happening at... Um, 3.30 p.m. to help improve some kids who are transitioning from middle school to high school to improve their writing and creative writing skills. Um, let's see. Be Your Own Superhero at, is going to be at the Women's Club. It's going to be a lecture, and they're going to be talking uh, talking about, do you keep booting your workouts? Uh, do you keep uh, booting your workout workouts off your calendar? That's basically what they mean. And then you can join from a one-hour workshop that's not about time management. It's about how you ensure that you are the priority. Stop downgrading the importance of your wellness and start valuing your time to stay healthy. And that's happening today from seven, uh, from six to seven p.m. It's free and it's going to be at the women's club. So that's basically it for your educational um, um, daily events happening for Wednesday. Here is uh, some of your night events happening. Top Hat Lounge is doing a music of fish starting at four thirty p.m. during their happy hour, and you get a punch card which uh, if you fill out the punch card, you get a ticket to one of the Top Hat shows um, and some uh, limited Wilma shows as well. You got Imagination Jam Society, Public Jam at the Imagination Brewing Company. If you're a musician who just like, wants to jam and play music, go on down to uh, Imagination Brewing Company and jam. Uh, starting at 6 p.m., uh, uh, 7 p.m., uh, Jazz Night at the Top Hat Lounge. Uh, you got Country Dance Lesson with Kathy Clark at the Sunrise Saloon. You got karaoke contest at the Eagles Lodge because tonight is the night for all the karaoke stuff. Karaoke stuff. Karaoke. That's what I like to call it because of my bad English. Uh, the Eagles Lodge is having karaoke. Um, Badlanders having karaoke. Sunrise Saloon is having karaoke. And here are some of your other events that are happening. Um, you got All Stars Tours featuring Sedinsky. Uh, n Nacho Pasta. Oh, it's gonna be hip hop music and be at the monks. I'm sorry, I butchered it. Bear with me. This is the first time I'm reading it, and they're gonna be continuing that throughout the night. Um, so that concludes your uh, events for your Wednesday. I have a brand new art clip that will only be playing once and only once, and that's gonna be today. And it actually closes. Um, today as well, and this is going to be at the Clay Studio of Missoula, so you guys only have today to check it out, but I also just got it yesterday, so here is uh, the, uh, the brand newest art clip, and it will also be the first and last time I play it.
want to thank uh, Rick Phillips for providing that art clip. And you can uh, watch any of those art clips by logging on to MCAT.org. To find out more information, go to the Clay Studio of Missoula or ClayStudioMissoula.com. So uh, check that out. Um, moving on, here are some of your events for your Thursday events. And see uh, me say tomorrow as um, strangely as possible. So starting tomorrow is uh, the 13th Annual Grief Institute. Let's start some your Thursday morning off with a little grief. Uh, Tamara Grief Resources Center presents the unique continuing education opportunity for professionals. Um, this is April 27th, tomorrow, um, to look at death another way, individual, community, and cultural factors that facilitate resilience through loss. The uh, with Tashi uh, Bordere, PhD, and you can call 541-8472 for, 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 for more information. It's going to be at Providence St. Pat's starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, there's People's Choice Voting. It's going to be at the P Missoula Public Libraries. Today, mar today marks the my people beginning of People's Choice Voting for Missoula Public Libraries' fifth annual library pr Peeps Show contest. Voting ends on May 7th. For further details, please visit org slash event dash news. So you just go to uh, Missoula Public Library and they'll give you a link to the Peeps Show. And the whole idea of the Peeps Show is that, you know, there's a uh, there's Peeps for, you know, the, the, the candy, the, the, the horrible marshmallow candy Peeps that seemingly last forever, even longer than Twinkies. Um, they put them in um, literary settings and you guys get to vote on the best uh, little... Uh, display uh, oh, uh, diorama. That's the, that's the word I'm looking for. It's diorama. Uh, that's my second favorite word um, after pavilion. Um, Western Montana's largest career fair is going to be at the Hilton Guardian Inn starting tomorrow at 3 p.m. Healthcare, administration, labor, technician, Missoula employers have so many jobs open now. Missoula Job Services annual Western Montana career fair is a chance to take a look at opportunities offered by nearly 100 local employers. Admis admission is free um, for job seekers. Just bring your resume and your uh, curiosity. The event is happening April 27th at the Hilton Garden Inn from 3 to 6 p.m. Uh, veterans are admitted a half an hour early and then sponsored by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management Incorporated. Uh, there's cybersecurity for the small business owner. If you're a small business owner who relies on the internet and who relies on sales through your from your house to, uh, through online, this would be a great place to have Better Business Bureau se serving Montana is hosting a special seminar that will uh, take a fast-paced look on how to uh, how identity uh, thieves target local small businesses. If you work or live in Western Montana, please consider attending the Cyber Security for Small Businesses Owner Seminar and Networking Event, and this is going to be happening 3 p.m. at DoubleTree Edgewater. Um, there's the Global Gathering at the Public House. It's the ITV Ghana, and you can join them for the eighth and the final year of ITV Ghana, the Missoula-based nonprofit that works to support leadership and education in Ghana and Montana. This event will feature live acoustic music, exciting raffle items, and the donation bar. Uh, bar and a donation bar. All donations are deductible and will go directly towards the um, construction of the of a teacher's housing unit in rural Ghana, as well as. Ghanaian students, ooh, I don't even know how to say that, uh, scholarships, um, student scholarships, and of course, everybody is welcome to attend. It's starting at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. Uh, Voices in Contemporary Art, Glenn Adamson at Helgate High School, the Missoula Art Museum presents uh, Volkos, The Breakthrough Years by Glenn Adamson as part of the MAM uh, lecture series, Voices in Contemporary Art. This event takes place in the... Uh, Auditorium at Helgate High School is free for MAM members and students. Five dollars suggested donation for the public, um, and, and it talks about Nexus, the Leela and uh, Leela and um, Rudy Audio Family Connect um, Collection. Adamson will talk about the Peter Volkos uh, radical departures from the president in the me medium of the ceramics, reshaping the possibilities for a discipline and um, place his work in context of his immediate colleagues, such as uh, Rudy Audio, John Ma Mason, and Ken Price, and more um, recently by the likes of Arlene. Um, uh, man, there's a lot of people he's um, naming. So this happen is happening. It's called Voices of Contemporary Art by Glenn Adamson. It's going to be at Hellgate High School, 7 p.m. 
at the Hellgate Auditorium. You can't miss it. It's happening t um, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. You guys can check it all out by going on to MissoulaEvents.net. And I think that pretty much concludes everything that's happening. I'll go over kind of like some of the uh, uh, music events that are happening. Rocking Karaoke is happening at the Dark Horse tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Honeycomb is going to be a DJ at Monks. Uh, Adriel Herschel and uh, Luna Roja is going to be at the Top Out Lounge. It's going to be rock music. And Trapdoor Social is going to be at VFW Rock Music. And those are some of your events that are happening in Missoula. Uh, once again, if you want more information about... Um, my morning show, Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to made you ride out twice. Be sure to just subscribe, like, and follow me on Twitter. Um, you can also go to mcat.org to find out more information about what we're up to and what we're going to be doing uh, for the next couple months and especially our transition to our summer hours for MCAT. But for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thank you for joining me. Mm -hmm.